A day has only 24 plus or minus one hour, and I have less than 10 minutes to speak about it. My name is Miroslav Shigivi. I was born in Bratislava, Czechoslovakia, studied in Lyon and working now in Karagove all around Europe, but still in the same time zone. Uh, I will tell you how to check the current time in Python and that you should check what your government does. If you uh, want to check the current time in Python, uh, you can call date and daytime now that will return a daytime object with all the information contained. But this will be just like that only for you if you are in Ohio or around. If I do that on my computer here in Germany, my daytime object will be six hours ahead of yours without the information that I'm actually six hours ahead of you. If your computer is set to UTC, you will get another daytime object. So now you have three daytime objects that were created at the same moment, uh, but uh, that uh, contain different information. If you want to get always the same time, uh, you can ask for UTC now, um, or even better uh, for now with the UTC uh, time zone uh, parameter. Uh, that will be the same on every computer. The advantage is that now you can calculate actually with time zones. In the first three uh, cases, you were not able to do that. Uh, if you want to know the current time in Ohio, you can tell, okay, well, we are four hours behind UTC, so I'm going to define my own time zone four hours behind the UTC, and you will get the current time. But the uh, disadvantage is that in summer and winter, it will always be the same and not respect your data at any time. The best way is to ask for some library that will know your time zone. You are now located in America and New York time zone, and that will calculate it. Uh, PYT is one possibility. Another possibility is uh, the new um, PEP uh, 6015, uh, that zone info module that will allow you to uh, get the current time with the information about time zones located directly on your computer. What are time zones? Uh, before railroad, they didn't make really sense, but when you have a railroad and you have two cities with different times, you don't want to send two trains at the same time on, those, uh, on that one track. Uh, so there was Greenwich and uh, around the world, uh, 12, plus 12, minus 12 uh, time zones, uh, which uh, later, with political decisions, uh, changed into more than 400 time zones. So these are the, uh, the same color is uh, the same time. Uh, so now you see the, the purple uh, US, uh, you have the same time zone as uh, most of the Caribbean uh, and uh, the center of uh, South America. Uh, where does this information come from? Um, there is a IANA organization uh, that uh, is, does not decide, they only monitor uh, the time zones information and they put it uh, into their, their database. And every year there are a few versions that you can download for free. And what you will find um, in this uh, module or in this um, archive, uh, there are a few programs, uh, Perl, Oak, uh, Shell, and the most interesting information are all the files uh, that um, are called Africa, North America, um, Europe, uh, and so on. So for example, for North America, you see 160 kilobytes of text information. There is uh, some com computer uh, readable information for the, for the time zones changes and a lot of text uh, that comments uh, this. On this IANA ORCA time zones website, there is also a mailing list that contains a real, like, like a book, uh, the, the whole information, the whole discussion about when, what changed in the history of time zones. If there is one picture from this talk that you want to take with, take this one. This is the history of all 440 time zones uh, in, around the world. On the x-axis, you see the years. And on the y-axis, um, it is the offset. So zero is Greenwich. This is uh, Europe and Africa. On the top, uh, it's to the east, so Asia and uh, Australia. And um, to the bottom, so minus five, minus six, minus seven, uh, that's um, uh, America. So there is where you can find uh, everything about uh, your time zone and the surrounding ones. Uh, what you see at the beginning are all the lines uh, are quite wide, wild. Uh, this was always the local time zone at uh, those places. And then uh, they were concentrated into plus or minus 24 uh, different um, levels. Uh, the small ticks uh, that you see are um, daylight saving time. And there are some huge jumps uh, that are some Pacific islands uh, in, that uh, change uh, the whole date uh, because they just uh, jumped from one side of the date uh, border to the other one. Uh, this is the detail of uh, uh, all uh, US uh, time zones. Uh, the ones at the beginning are Alaska that uh, moved uh, from uh, east uh, to the Western Hemisphere. 
uh, what you see here is uh, that uh, all the ticks they continue up to 2038. This means that with the current version of uh, time zone database, uh, your computer will always jump between um, the daylight saving time, even if the government decides that uh, it should be different. So if you think that you have a perfect program and testable and in Docker, um, and you don't touch it anymore, this is what it will do with the local time. So update your time zone uh, database. Um, these are all the uh, US time zones. So you see that there is a huge concentration in Indiana, and uh, there are several time zones uh, in uh, Alaska. Um, Indiana has over uh, 300 different uh, regions uh, that uh, in the past century to some point had a different time than another one. Uh, fortunately, um, most of the changes happened between 1970. That's why the current time zones are based on what has happened since 1970. So this is not really available for time before 1970. So if you use um, America New York time zone, don't use it, don't rely on that um, four times in um, Ohio before 1970. Uh, the information for New York uh, looks like this. Uh, so there you see that between 1883, uh, there, was, um, uh, there was local time of New York, not of Ohio. Um, and then later, we, they used uh, some rules that are defined uh, somewhere else. So this is the New York uh, rule for the 20s and for the 50s about uh, daylight saving time. And these are the US rules. Um, you see, during the war, World War II, there was um, daylight saving time first war, uh, called uh, war time. And then it was changed uh, to Eastern peace time. Um, this is the information how, uh, or the graph, how the daylight saving time in those few American time zones looked like. So you see that it, it was not everywhere at the same time. So at the beginning in the 40s, 50s, 70s, only about a third of all time zones in America used um, uh, daylight saving time. And the, even then it changed from one to another. So probably that was uh, Indiana and uh, these uh, regions that uh, that decided to uh, start with the daylight saving time or not. Um, this was even worse uh, elsewhere in the world um, because what's important is that if you if the government decides to adjust the daylight saving time policy, they should announce it uh, in advance. And if you read uh, those files in the visit uh, database, you will find cases of countries that even in the past ten years uh, with modern airports and other systems that need to use some standard uh, um, system of, um, of daylight saving time, uh, that these governments decided to start daylight saving time one day or one week later, or to decide, or they decided to abolish or stop using daylight saving time in the respective year at all. So that's a lot of interesting reading uh, in those files. So have a look at them. Um, and uh, please don't invent uh, your own time zones. Don't hard code any rules. So like it's the first last uh, Sunday of November, I'm going to do something. No, use the standard library. Keep your time zones ellipse uh, up to date because they change several times a year. And follow your government's intentions to modify your time zone and inform the TZT on org uh, mailing list. You will get famous. And please, if you can, avoid the time zones at all. Thank you very much.